Hello, my name is Jack Sim, normally called Mr. Toilet. But today we are going to talk about a different subject about the base of the pyramid. There are 7.88 billion people today in the world. Yet, half of these people are still not part of our formal economy. They are called the base of the pyramid. And each of them earn less than 8 US dollar a day. Many companies neglected them because they see them as non-profitable customer before. But now with the advanced technology, we can have access to them. And I can now explain to you why this new 4 billion new customer are very, very important for us to include in our global economy. COVID has killed 4.4 million people, infected 210 million people, and another 150 billion people have entered poverty because of this pandemic. Half of all the jobs in the world are affected, and we need new marketplace because companies are suffering as well. Yet, every year, there's 150 billion US dollars donated to the development industry through NGOs, through charity, and poverty continues as usual. The needle did not move. One billion people don't have access to electricity. 1.3 billion people have no lighting. 1.6 billion people don't have proper housing. Two and a half billion people don't have toilets. Four billion people have no sewage treatment. 780 million people doesn't have clean water. 750 million people don't have education. And 820 million people don't have enough food. You can either see this as a problem or you can see this as an opportunity. I grew up in Singapore when Singapore was having a per capita income of $500 in 1965 when we became an independent country. Within 25 years, Singapore transformed itself from third world to first world. How did it do it? We did not accept donation. We attract foreign investment and we unlock the spirit of enterprise and the good work ethics of our people. And through good governance, we continue to upgrade the skill and income level of our people. And now we're living as third richest country per capita in the world. Every country can follow the Singapore development model and adapt it to their local condition. China has done this and got 700 million people out of poverty in the last 30 years. Rwanda has done the same and became the fastest growing state in Africa. In fact, Rwanda called themselves the Singapore of Africa. 10 years ago, I met President Clinton at the Clinton Global Initiative and we made a commitment to build a World Trade Center for the poor in Singapore. Our vision is to find all the people who are already having solutions for water, sanitation, energy, fintech, agritech, housing, healthcare, logistics, and to fuse them together such that governments, UN system, companies, local NGOs, and communities and educational institutions can come together in concert so that we become an ecosystem rather than a fragmented solution. There are already 4,000 proven social entrepreneurs around the world who has solutions for all this sector. That means we do not have to reinvent the wheel. All we need to do is to recycle and reuse this good idea, scale it by replicating it all over to locations that are still not uh, having this solution. So our job is to bring everybody together into a coordinated approach. And if everyone knew what everyone knew, we have solution in every location. 
our job is to map, match and motivate people to invest, to trade, so that when they all come together, it will be cheaper, faster, better and easier. So when we have a location, we bring in the agri-tech, the fintech, the uh, solutions for every sector, then we bring in the players. And when everybody works in concert, this market solution is much more sustainable because people are solving the problem by themselves. The UN 17 SDG has inspired us to take their guidance because all the statistics are there and we built a new building called the SDG Centre in Singapore as well. This 65,000 square foot building has just been completed 16 months ago and we are already collecting all the information around the world of different technology, different business model, different uh, distribution model, and different nodes around the world. And we welcome you to partner with us so that we can continuously develop this ecosystem in an open source, trusted and harmonious manner. The, inside the building, we will have co-working space, we have virtual uh, meetings, we have work labs, we have uh, this uh, maker space, we have a lot of facility, product design, startup, and we could do it physically as well as uh, remotely, virtually. So today with internet, everyone is connected to everyone. So we see ourselves as one of the centers and you are another and we go and cooperate together. How do I have confidence that this can be done? Looks like a very big task for 4 billion people, a solution that requires a lot of effort. I started the World Toilet Organization 20 years ago as a movement. And through this subject, which is formally neglected called sanitation, we use advocacy to drive a movement and solve it and put it on center stage. At that time, 2.6 billion people don't have toilet and 2 million people die of diarrhea every year. And when this problem is seen as a marketplace, we see a demand for 1 billion toilet. So when you see a problem, the other side is a positive opportunity. I use humor and uh, very quirky photography, use a lot of creativity to catch attention on this subject because otherwise people would think toilets, poop, shit, they want to avoid it. But the moment we are able to make them laugh, they become very excited. And the media writes so much about it that every year about two and a half billion people directly or indirectly heard about World Toilet Day, World Toilet Organization, and then importance of toilets. So we host World Toilet Summit in India with President Abdul Kalam and six ministers and then the Crown Prince of the Netherlands came, now he's the king, as well as we created World Toilet Colleges uh, in uh, Aurangabad and now spreading into seven cities in India. We built Sani Shop model in Cambodia, teach people to build their own toilet, sell their own toilet and people buy the toilet so that they can have the convenience, safety and the hygiene and health. When we arrive at uh, the UN, I lobbied all the countries of the UN together with the Singapore Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And eventually, we managed to get 193 countries' government to adopt our founding day, 19 of November, as the official World Toilet Day. This legitimacy is so powerful that every year, all the government in the world pay attention to commemorate World Toilet Day and to launch public policy and, and uh, activities and budget on improving their sanitation. Because once they realize that preventing a disease is better than cure and cheaper, then they start to realize the cost-benefit analysis of sanitation is so much more efficient than to build hospital 
and Madison. Along the way, a lot of celebrities came along. Jay-Z, Coldplay performed at the Global Citizen Festival on World Toilet Day in Mumbai to 80,000 free tickets. In China, there is a President Xi Jinping is now the leader of China Toilet Revolution. And so I changed into a new costume of a cultural revolution guard and we promote sanitation in this way. It became a big success that tourism toilets in China are now very, very clean. I'm actually quite surprised because it used to be very dirty and the culture changed very, very fast in the last five years. Matt Damon also came to support World Toilet Day by explaining the importance of sanitation uh, to, through a mock interview, and this all helps. Mr. Bill Gates started to pay attention on sanitation because he's a health, uh, invested a lot of money on global health, and then he realized that if you prevent it, then the solution can come faster. So Mr. Bill Gates spent about $200 million on reinventing the toilet and producing new technology and uh, new standards. I have the pleasure of having this official meeting with uh, Prime Minister Modi when he visited Singapore uh, to show his appreciation on our help for his Swatch Bharat project, which is the biggest toilet construction project in the history of mankind building 110 million toilets. In China, we built rainbow school toilets in rural areas. We've started and completed 15 schools and now presented our solution to the Ministry of Education in China for replication in 214,000 other schools. Salman Khan came to do fundraising and this was on national television in India and we raised 140 thousand uh, dollars US dollars impromptu so as you see doing social work going around the world catching traction creating movement a lot of people that you don't expect to turn up they all come and join you in 2008 time magazine named me hero of the environment and that also helped create legitimacy we don't do our work to win accolades but accolades help us do our work Queen Elizabeth also gave a Points of Light Award. So in conclusion, I want to say, how can we create a movement to end poverty, to end open defecation, or to end any of these problems that you might face personally and want to solve? Think abundance. You do not have enough resources to solve it yourself. So use other people's money other people time, other people talent, other people authority, branding, and all their network and power, and align them all together in the sequence that they all find it beneficial for their own aspiration, and that when they join you, they also enjoy the process. And if this is fun for them, the world starts to change. In an ecosystem of nature, everybody is not a winner or a loser. We are all together here. And our society, we have rich and poor and all the divide. If we start to think of our society in the same way as a forest ecosystem, then what will happen is that we will start to be humble. We will see ourselves as one of the players of this ecosystem. And eventually, nobody will be left behind. If you create a system, in my World Toilet Organization journey, humor, great powerful telling, storytelling, that uh, attracted the media. So the media benefit is that they can sell more stories, get more readership, and earn more advertising income. The politician then sees that the media likes it, and so if they go to talk about sanitation in the offer toilet promises, then they can get elected. <clears throat> so the politician gets power, 
but people get toilet. Then the bureaucrats allocate budget, and then the university professor, he can do his research and publish because if he don't publish, he perish. So everyone benefit, and the donor then start to see that this is very important, high visibility, they donate money, and invest, and then the NGO came to receive the money and people get toilet. So if you are able to align everybody objective, you can get a whole ecosystem built up. And this is the same way we can build up for ending global poverty. Everyone has only one lifetime. And the lifetime is between 80 to 85 years. I've budgeted myself to die at the age of 80. And I have now 5,660 days before my 80th birthday. And on the last day, before I close my eyes, I want to be able to say to myself, I have used the time as much as possible and I was not wasting my time on watching television or playing computer game or things that are trivial. Use your life in the best way because it is not about money. A billionaire is one that improves the life of a billion people, not just merely having a billion dollars. Thank you very much for your attention.